Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna lay some foundational concepts down that you maybe have seen previously. We want to revisit these though, because they are essential to the concepts that are the foundations of trigonometry. Fundamentally, what trigonometry is, it's a mathematics that relates angular measure and lengths as arc lengths or the lengths of a side of a triangle. Therefore, where we're gonna start right now is talking about angular measure. First, let's remind ourselves of the most commonly used measure of angle outside of a mathematics classroom, which is degrees. And fundamentally, what degrees is based on is the fact that to do a full circle is 360 degrees. So let's talk about a starting point right here. Uh, we would call zero degrees this point where we start. If we go all the way around this circle, we've completed 360 degrees. And importantly, we'll get more into this in a little bit, we would call zero degrees and 360 degrees co-terminal because we started on a circle here and completed either zero degrees or 360 degrees, we would end up at the same point. Then if we know a full circle is 360 degrees, we know if we go half a circle, we would get half of the degrees which would be 180 degrees. If we go a quarter of the way or between zero and 180, we would get 90 degrees. We know about 90 degree triangles, right triangles. Um, if we went three fourths of the way around, we would have 270 degrees. There's a long fun conversation about why 360 degrees, who invented it, you can look that up. Wikipedia has some interesting information on in a debate, whether it's the Egyptians, Babylonians, or Indians that created uh, the, th the 360 degrees around a circle. But in this video, what we want to focus on is an another way to, to measure angles, which is radians. Importantly, radians are extremely useful in mathematics, specifically when we get to calculus, because there's simplicity. What we have is zero radians is the same as zero degrees. It starts here at this point right here. For radians, it's defined as if we go all the way around this circle, we've completed two pi radians. For many of you, if this is the first time you've seen radians, this is gonna feel a little bit different. But remember, the whole concept of 90 degrees being this right angle or 180 degrees being a straight angle right here is all based on this end point of 360 degrees completes a circle. In this new world of radians, which we'll use a bunch in this course and moving on in mathematics because of its simplicity in use, we will call two pi radians one complete circle. And then just to finish this information off, based off of that, two pi radians be taking to complete the circle, we can do exactly the same work we did with the 90, 180, and 270 here. If it takes two pi radians to get all the way around, halfway around would be one pi radians, or simply pi radians. If we now wanted to go somewhere between, or the halfway point between pi radians and zero radians, well, that would be half of a pi radians, or what we'd call pi over two radians. And then if we wanted to go three fourths away around the circle, well, we have half a pi, pi, and then one and a half pi's, or another way of writing this would be three pi over two radians. Again, really important to the work that you'll do in trigonometry is getting used to radians. They're gonna feel a bit different, but remember, at any point, you can go to this idea that one full circle is two pi radians. What that means is, in terms of degrees, if we wanna go twice around the circle, that's 720. If we wanna go twice around the circle and describe that in radians, that would be four pi radians. And importantly, whenever we need to do any conversions between these, we can use any kind of conversion method we've done before, with this conversion rate, that 360 degrees equals two pi radians. Alternatively, if we wanted to, we could divide both sides of this equation by two and say that 180 degrees equals pi radians. And in fact, in the work that I will do, I will use this more reduced version of this. It's just a little bit simpler to use and a little bit less reducing when I'm doing the work. But again, this is the conversion rate in angular measure between degrees and radians. 
Right out the gates, you're gonna find that it's really important that we know how to convert between degrees and radians. All we need is this conversion rate right here where 180 degrees equals pi radians and a simple understanding of dimensional analysis or how to convert between different units. In this case right here, we're gonna convert 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees into radians. I'm using these, by the way, just to show the, the actual work of converting between degrees and radians. And also, these are gonna, as you're gonna find, the most important measures that we're going to use in trigonometry especially when we get to our unit circle coming soon. But if at any point I want to convert between degrees to radians or radians to degrees, all I need to do is to multiply by the appropriate conversion factor. And in this case right here, I use this relationship. And if I want to take degrees and turn them into radians, importantly, what I do is put the measure for degrees on bottom. So the relationship here is 180 degrees equals pi radians. And again, I'm putting the information for degrees on bottom because then the units of degrees cancel and I'm left with my only units of radians. By the way, there's an awkward conversation here that I'm not gonna get over about whether radians is a unit. It's actually a ratio. We'll talk about that later, but let's move forward with this right here. So I multiply 30 degrees by this conversion factor of pi over 180. And again, I do it this way, not 180 over pi, because I want degrees on bottom to cancel the units. And then what I get here is 30 times pi over 180. I'll write that real fast. So what I get is 30 pi over 180 radians. Um, but what I want to do is reduce this. I can divide these both by 30 to get one and a six to give me that 30 degrees is equal to pi over six radians. That's really all of the work right there. I'm gonna do exactly the same treatment with these other two. I would actually suggest if that made sense to you, that move, pause the video, try the work with 45 and 60, and then I will quickly give you the answers now. And again here for both 45 and for 60, what I'm going to do is multiply by this conversion factor of pi radians over 180 degrees. My degrees cancel, leaving me with the units of radians. When I multiply across, I'll have 45 pi over 180. I actually can divide 80, 180 is divisible by 45. 45 goes into 180 uh, four times. And so this will reduce down to a one, that's a four. So I get pi fourths radians for 45 degrees. And then the same treatment here for 60, very similar to the 30 degrees, degrees cancel here. I can reduce the 60 and 180, 60 goes into 183 times and giving me that this is pi over three radians. Two things to say here, I'm not gonna show an example, but if I wanna convert from radians back to degrees, which is something that we could, could want to do, I simply would flip this over so I could cancel the units of radians. I'm not gonna show any examples there, but I also wanna say, just for your notes at this point, I would pause the video and write down these three facts we just found, that 30 degrees equals pi over six radians, 45 degrees is pi over four radians, and 60 degrees is pi over three radians. Also in that, so that's important information, but then also have in your, your notes, these pieces right here. So zero radians, zero degrees, the same. We know that two pi radians is 360 by definition, and then a 90 degree angle is the same as pi over two radians. 180 is pi, as we have right here, and 270 degrees is three pi over two. It's not incredibly necessary that you have these all memorized when we go through this class, but you're gonna find as the information builds up, it's really nice to have this information just locked in. It takes a little bit of time to memorize them, maybe some note cards, drawing a circle and drawing the information in, or at least practicing changing the units from degrees to radians and then from radians to degrees. Next thing to talk about are coterminal angles. This is a pretty simple concept once you get the basics. But the idea is, is that as we turn around the circle, if we allow angles that are bigger than 360 or also less than zero negative angles that we'll talk about in one second, many angles end up at the exactly the same part spot around our circle. They might have gone around a bunch more times, but the ending location is the same. So we call those points, to we call those angles, excuse me, coterminal. So for instance, if we start here at zero degrees, 
Uh, we could go over to 90 degrees, which is right here. So perfect, not a big deal. But then if someone said, what about 450 degrees? Well, for 450 degrees, we start here. And what we know is that we're first going to go all the way around this circle. That's 360 degrees. But if we're going to go all the way to 450, we have 90 more degrees to go. So we'd end up right here. So on this circle at this point right here, this is 90 degrees, but it's also coterminal to 450. Coterminal angles are just off in terms of degrees by 360 degrees. So just to have that written down so we have it in our notes here, given to any angle, as long as we're describing it in degrees, that's important here, we'll talk about radians. But if we're in degrees like 90, and if I wanted to find a coterminal angle or determine if an angle was coterminal, what I know is all angles of the form of that degree, so 90 in this case, plus any multiple of 360, the K in this case can be negative or positive or zero actually for this to work. But if it's of this form where you just do one circle this way or one circle this way, you will end up at exactly the same point and we call those angles coterminal. Again, just to say, and this is really important, is that we are not saying those angles are exactly the same. We're just saying that they end up at the same point. I mean, if you go out, you're going skiing or snowboarding, and you do a 360 and you stomp it, and the person behind you that does a straight air doesn't spin at all, we can't say that you guys did the exactly the same jump or had the same spin. We're just saying that you end up in the same point. Importantly to the use of trigonometry, we care about where you end up as far as your angle goes, spinning around a bunch of times doesn't matter as much, it matters where you land. And that in, in our mathematical speak, we call that coterminal. And then the conversation is exactly the same with radians, but just with that conversion of what it means to do a full circle. If we're in radians, then all angles of the form of theta, whatever angle we have, plus two pi k, so again, any multiple of two pi spins, because two pi in radians is all the way around the circle, we are coterminal at that point. And just for an easy example, if we start here at zero and we go pi radians, which takes us here to this 180 degrees right here, that's exactly the same as three pi radians. So if we go two pi radians here, and then one more radian right here, we end up here. So pi radians and three pi radians are coterminal. They end at the same point around this circle or the same orientation if we're in context. Then building off the idea of coterminal angles, we actually can introduce a rigorous idea of what negative angle means. Importantly, we talked about 90 degrees. So 90 degrees is all the way up here to the top. Well, what does, what does negative 90 degrees mean? Or let's use you know, maybe a different number. It's the question would be, where is negative 120 degrees? Where does that land me on this? Well, just from a conceptual point of view, what it means is you're spinning the other way, in this case, clockwise. Normally, in our, in our analysis of angles, we're thinking about a counterclockwise spin around this circle. Negative angles mean we're gonna go counterclockwise. Again, just because I'm a really big fan of skiing and snowboarding, if you're a snowboarder or a skier, this would be like the unnatural way of spinning. You have a natural way of spinning in an unnatural way. Um, but just to confirm that real fast, what I know is that wherever 100, negative 120 degrees lands, it's coterminal to if I took 120 degrees and I added 360. By definition, if I add multiples of 360, I'll get to the same place. So if I take this and I add 360, I'll end up at 240. 240 is if I go all the way around here to 180, 180 plus 60 degrees would end me up somewhere right here. So this is 240 degrees. And then as I said, this conceptual way of thinking about it is we spin the opposite way. This is a positive degrees. If I want to go negative 120, what it means is I'm going clockwise around the circle. And if this is 90 plus 30, I do. I end up at exactly the same, the same point right here at negative 120. Importantly to the work, this idea of coterminal can really help you. If you're confused about a negative angle or a really large positive angle, to find out where it ends up on the circle after you've done a bunch of spins forwards or backwards or counterclockwise or clockwise, just add or subtract multiples of 360 if you're in degrees or multiples of two pi until you get one that's manageable. 
What we're looking for to and analyze it on this unit circle is you want to look for a degree measure that's between zero and 360. Or if you're in radians, what you're looking for is from zero radians all the way to two pi radians. And again, the work, the real work that you'll be doing when you need this is take, if you have like five pi radians or, or maybe something bigger, 17 pi over three radians, um, what you could do then is just subtract two pi radians until you get something between zero and two pi. And then it's easier to find on here once you know how this circle is split up well in terms of radians. And again, the same thing with degrees.